This is Tucker, and today I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, moving my uh, transmission tunnel back about three and a half inches and seeing what I'm going to do to attach the firewall of the Roadmaster to the firewall of the 57. So uh, as far as moving the tunnel back, that's not a necessary step for any of you guys and gals out there that's planning on doing this Tri-5 swap onto a Roadmaster or Caprice chassis. But for me, it's just kind of a personal preference. Um, I kind of really want to get the uh, same relationship of the motors to the uh, chassis location that they were factory because that was kind of the Tri-5's claim to fame was the weight transfer that they had. You know, back in the day, you know, you could have had a brand new Chevelle in the 60s with a 350 horse 327 L79 and uh, some old boy had a 55, 6 or 7 Chevy went to Nicky Chevrolet and bought him a brand new L79 327, same motor and put a four speed behind it, and odds are he's gonna tear that Chevelle up, you know, because uh, one, he's a little bit lighter. Number two, you know, that the relationship of that motor to the front spindles of that car, you know, he's gonna have that motor setting back further, so it's gonna, you know, throw more of that weight under the rear wheels where you want it, and uh, he's not gonna spin as bad and hopefully be able to take that old Chevelle. So that's kind of where I'm at. I wanna go ahead and get it set back there like that. We're gonna get it going with the motor in the location that it's at now. But I want to go ahead and get the tunnel done so I don't have to do any cutting and welding on it later when I get ready to go ahead and slide that thing back. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that and we'll see where we end up. I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but under here, you can kind of tell the width isn't going to be too awfully bad as far as moving things back. Uh, our biggest problem is going to be the height. GM did a pretty good job at keeping that tunnel down as low as they could. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and get all the measurements we need and get it traced out. Uh, and really, the biggest problem we might have is all the uh, oil and stuff. After having 198,000 miles, it's kind of slinged around underneath this uh, floor and tunnel area here. So hopefully we don't catch her on fire and burn the old goose down. So I'll have a good fire extinguisher on uh, standby here. All right. Well, what we're planning on doing here... It's taking it coming along right in here and cutting this all the way along here and then up towards the top till we get up over here we're going to come out a little bit wider so we can clear the width of that motor when we do that engine setback and come straight up once we get this tunnel all cut out we're planning on bringing it straight back which will actually raise it and trim it up to get it as close as we can to fit in here so we can weld it back in I'm sure we'll have to come up with a little bit of filler material, but hopefully it'll come out uh, pretty close that we can uh, get by without having to add a whole lot. So we'll go ahead and get started on mapping this thing out. Well, we started tracing everything out here and measuring and getting this laid out kind of where we're going to cut this tunnel out of here. I went ahead and cut a couple pieces of angle iron here that I'm going to go ahead and temporarily spot weld here to the floor. One on this side and one on the other side. That way, when we go to cutting that out, the floor won't actually drop down and move out of the, uh, the normal location for the Roadmaster floor because I don't really want it to lose itself because we're going to have that tunnel completely removed once I get that cut so I can set it back and get more tunnel clearance. So we'll go ahead and get started on uh, getting those welded in there and get this tunnel cut out of here.
All right, well, we got that tunnel removed out of here. Um, and so the goal now is to be, is just going to be to start twiddling away at that tunnel and moving it straight back about three and a half inches. Uh, that way it gives us plenty of room for whenever I decide to move the motor and tranny back that three and a half inches to get it to the stock uh, location of the 57 Chevy area. And it, I'm thinking by the time we get it moved back there, it ought to pretty much bring that tunnel there right up with this tunnel here. We're going to have to massage that end up just a little bit just because the motor and tranny does set over about three quarters of an inch compared to the 57s being center lined. So, uh, and I don't think we're going to have to do anything as far as back here on the tunnel of this 4L60. Uh, it's, you know, three and a half inches. It'll have plenty of room here to still clear it here. So we'll start whittling away on it. We'll take a look at it here. But uh, here's kind of what we've, what we've got here. Here's the tunnel area here. And I went ahead and made all these little reference marks. That way I'll know where it, they're, they're on here. And then they're also on the uh, what's left of the floor in there as far as uh, the back side here. Along the side, I ran them clear on down. That way I know exactly if I'm even on both sides of getting it in relationship with that three and a half inches. Uh, once I move it back, it'll be even on both sides. So we'll go ahead and start whittling away on this and seeing what we can end up with. Well, I went ahead and cut the kick panels out for the Buick Roadmaster so we could get down here to the 57 kick panels and see kind of what we have. But uh, when I initially did this, I wasn't for sure exactly how I was going to tie this in. So I left this 90 right here where the original 57 toe boards actually spot well into this, this kick panel area of a 57. Uh, intentionally, just because, you know, I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it so I could leave my options open. So I think I'm going to go ahead and blow this front clip back off of here real quick before I can get to the front side of the firewall and start doing a little bit of measuring and seeing what I want to do there. If I, if I go with the stock tow boards, then I'm probably going to cut all of this Roadmaster stuff off pretty much just a straight line across. But then I'll, I'll have to go ahead and put that front firewall mount like the 57 had originally uh, back on here. I, I took it off temporarily. Um, if I do that, we'll just have to build a mount onto the Roadmaster frame. To give a little bit of support to the front of the car so i'm going to pull this front clip and we'll see what we got Well, we got the front clip pulled back off and uh, kind of show everybody kind of what we have going on here. So, being that we have the uh, stock 57s 
the, the tow board stops right here so you actually have uh, less less leg room. That's why I was going to kind of try to leave this this Roadmaster set up here because you're actually gaining, you know, probably about six inches worth of distance here. Plus, you know, I was able to, there's a, there's a big old mount that comes up underneath this right here that supports this uh, firewall on the Roadmaster. Originally, it bolts the body on right up under here. So if I remove all that and go back with the stock tow board of a 57 Chevy, I'm going to have to put the, uh, bracket back on this is what i cut off of it earlier i kept it just in case this is the route i went this will actually mount right up here on the front side of the firewall so i'll if i remove that roadmaster stuff there and go with more of the stock setup then um, i'm just gonna have to build a little mount that bolts in to this mount right over here onto the frame of the roadmaster it looks like it's gonna all be pretty close and i think it looks like i'm gonna probably be able to uh use these uh roadmaster inner fenders temporarily too for when i do that race and everything but uh once i get ready to set the motor back then i'll probably go ahead and put the stock inner fenders in it for the 57. so i'll uh unbolt this inner fender slide it forward and kind of see a, see what we got Well, once I got that inner fender out of the way, I, I realized that there's actually two mounts on this. One that's inside there and one that's on over here. So, man, that made this a real stout firewall mount. So, uh, I might go ahead and, uh, instead of removing that whole thing, I might kind of come up here along where this is pinch welded together along the top side here and whittle this whole top section off because it's pretty jaggedy and stuff. It, it, it wouldn't look good if I tied into that and went up to the firewall. Um, I'm going to try to whittle that off of there and see what I've got there to see if maybe I can tie into some of this and bring it on up. So we'll go ahead and start whittling away at it and see what we got. Well, I think I've got a pretty solid game plan finally on this. I think we're going to go ahead and get some 18 gauge and cut us a panel that's going to go up and down right in here. We'll break the bottom over to where it uh, falls right along this pinch weld area here on this lower Roadmaster floor. And then we'll break the top over to where it comes up and, and mates up with this uh, original 57 floor on this tow board area. And then we can just go along here and just drill about every six inches and spot weld it to the top and then do the same along this pinch weld on the bottom here so uh, we'll get us a piece of material located and get started on that and see how it ends up Well, it looks like we're going to just have to do a little bit of trimming on that, kind of around where that steering column goes and then where the speedometer cable goes. And then where this uh, kind of dips in over here, we'll cut a little bit off of that. I went ahead and traced a pattern out on that piece. But uh, this is pretty much what she's going to look like from the inside here. So I think it's going to work out fine. I think uh, what I might end up doing is coming in here at an angle, as long as we're going to clear that, that brace that's underneath there. And kind of make a line over and then bend this part of the floor back up and uh, we'll have to have a few small filler pieces for this tunnel here but uh, that's going to give us plenty of room for exhaust when we do eventually move that motor back because I'd really like to put some long tube headers on it and I just don't want to run into any clearance problems at that point so we'll get that piece off of there and get her kind of trimmed up fitting just a little bit better and we'll go from there
All right, well, we got that piece all trimmed up right around here to where it's kind of sitting like the Roadmaster did. And we went ahead and cut a relief up here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a speedometer cable hole right there. We went ahead and cut that. Even though this is a drive-by wire right now on the speedometer, um, we're going to, you know, in case we ever eventually want to put an old Muncie 4-speed or 350 turbo or something old school in it, we'll already have that hole in there for the speedometer cable. So once we get it done, we're going to spot weld, you know, about every 4 to 6 inches here along the original firewall and through this metal and then do the same down here on this pinch weld area. And that'll support, you know, tie the, the Roadmaster floor to the 57 uh, firewall here. And then the last thing that we'll end up doing is taking this original piece that I had initially cut off. And we'll get it placed up in here. And get it welded back on. And uh, it's got a spot down here at the bottom for an original 57 mount. We'll probably make one. Uh, it ain't going to have to be too much since we have those two other mounts down there. But the main reason I'm going to put this back on is for when I do that engine setback, I'll have my locating spot here for the original 57 inner fenders. So now that we got this driver's side done, we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can kind of do the similar thing to the passenger side. All right, well, we got this piece cut, bent, and it's placed in there. It looks like it's going to fit all right. So, like I said on the driver's side, we'll come in here every four to six inches, drill along that pinch weld area, and spot weld it every four to six inches. And same thing on the top side where it goes into the original 57 firewall. Get that spot welded in there. And then after we get that done, we'll come in here with this original bracket here again. Get it kind of mount it up into place like so and we'll go down and make a mount right off the uh, Roadmaster chassis to bolt that on there and like I said we have the attach point right here where my hands at for the original 57 inner fenders there too when we get to that point so we'll go around and take a look on the inside so once we get ready to spot weld this body on here permanently uh, that'll be pretty much what it's going to look like in here along the uh, tow board portion of the firewall from the inside the only thing we'll have left to do at that point is go ahead and radius this where this tunnel has a little bit of a gap on on both ends passenger side and driver's side as far as the rest of the tunnel it's setting down flesh against the floor we went ahead and marked it before we cut it out with a straight line along the tunnel and the floor so we know exactly how much we moved the tunnel back we needed that three and a half inches and then we went ahead and marked the center line too on the bottom here and along the top that way we knew we kept it you know in line as far as right and left which way it needed to be so we've got it all set and right where it needs to be so uh, once we get to that point we'll just be able to spot weld it down here and then uh, build our little bit of filler on each side there and that'll pretty much wrap up this uh, firewall kick panel area and then as far as the outer part here 
on both sides what we'll do we'll come in here drill these uh, pinch welds out for this piece go ahead and get rid of this it's, it looks awful we'll come in with some 16 gauge which is a little heavier than the 18 we used up here and we'll uh, get a nice clean panel that'll come right along here and tie this all together here but that should be pretty easy that'll be one of the last things we do uh, once we get this this body permanently mounted on here well now I think we're at the point where I'm ready to go ahead and take this uh, body back off of this chassis uh, when I initially put it on here I thought I'd have to take it on and off of here at least two to three times uh, to get everything trimmed up and get it fitting on here but uh, to my surprise it actually went on here the first time and uh, if I would have had everything prepped underneath um, I could have just left it on here but uh, I didn't have because I really wouldn't have ever dreamed in a million years that it would have fit on here as decent as it did so uh, I've got to pull it back off of here uh, I was started out using some of that 415 you know on the inner fender areas and stuff that I was working on but uh, the stuff I'd had the lid was was stuck on there when I finally got it off I only had enough to do part of one fender so uh, I'd seen a buddy of mine and uh, he was telling me that he uses this stuff called the uh, chassis saver so I, I ended up picking up a core to that so after I lift this body back off of here I'm gonna go back through on these uh, like inner rocker areas and everywhere I did patchwork clean it up and put some of this chassis saver on here he said it's about the same as the uh, poor 15 but just a little bit cheaper so we're gonna try it out see if it works a good or not and there's a few other spots on the body that I need to weld up that I didn't you know when I initially uh, had put it together because I wasn't sure what all I was gonna do as far as getting it mounted on the Roadmaster so uh, the next stage is basically lifting it back off, tying up a few loose ends on the uh, welding on the body a little bit, and getting this uh, chassis saver put you know in all the areas that I won't be able to get to once it's welded on. So then we'll get her set back down for the final time and get everything burnt in there. So uh, and I want to thank everybody who's been uh, watching and uh, following along on these videos. And if you're new, please hit the like and subscribe button and uh, leave comments you know if, if anybody has any questions or anything i uh, really appreciate everybody that's been watching and uh, until next time take care